Wrestlers, like any athlete or performer, would always prefer to go out with a bang rather than a whimper. They don't want the audience's last impression of them to potentially sully all the good things they did before, and it's best to hang up the boots with a classic, not a dud. Sometimes, however, dishonorable in-ring career conclusions are unavoidable, whether the wrestler themselves realizes it's their last match or not. I'm Adam Pacitti from Cultaholic Wrestling, and these are 10 depressing final wrestlers wrestling matches. Join us! Number 10. D-Generation X vs The Brothers of Destruction at WWE Crown Jewel 2018 Shawn Michaels enjoyed pretty much the most perfect WWE retirement possible, bowing out after battling The Undertaker in the classic main event of WrestleMania 26. And then he went and spoiled it all by saying something stupid like, yes, I'll take those three trillion dollars to break my vow and do a tag match with my mates in Saudi Arabia. The heartbreak kid, bald as a baby's backside, put on the leather pants one more time to team with Triple H against the Brothers of Destruction at Crown Jewel 2018. Calamitous on just about every level, the bout was four former greats shuffling around in something that bordered on a parody of pro wrestling at times. Hunter tore his peck early, Kane's mask and wig decided to randomly fall off his head at one point, and everybody involved looked like a knackered old man reconsidering how much their pride was really worth. Michaels has since said he regrets the match and feels sorry for the other guys in it as it didn't come off anywhere close to how they wanted, but that he's able to compartmentalize and separate the match from the rest of his career. Lucky for some. Number 9. Loch Ness vs The Giant at WCW Uncensored 1996 The gargantuan giant haystacks was never someone you were going to get a technical classic out of, but he was a major attraction, particularly in his native United Kingdom, but also in Canada, Germany and Japan. He made a late and highly unlikely excursion to the United States when he signed a deal with WCW in early 1996. Coming in as a member of the cartoonish Dungeon of Doom, Haystacks wrestled a handful of matches for the Turner-owned organization, including one that turned out to be his last. Billed as Loch Ness and tipping the scales at somewhere close to 600 pounds, he took on the giant at the downright disastrous uncensored pay-per-view. The only saving grace here is that the match was short, lasting barely two and a half minutes. Despite its brevity, it managed to get a minus one star rating from Dave Meltzer and contributed to Haystacks being named the worst wrestler of the year by his Wrestling Observer newsletter. To see a British wrestling institution be so barely mobile, even more so than usual, while doing the job was sad, but even sadder was the fact that Haystacks passed away just months later, aged 52. Number 8. Randy Savage, Jeff Hardy and AJ Styles vs Jeff Jarrett, Kevin Nash and Scott Hall at TNA Turning Point 2004. Randy Savage hadn't been seen in professional wrestling since leaving WCW in mid-2000 when he showed up in TNA's Impact Zone at the tail end of 2004. The Macho Man was the big surprise as the company's first monthly pay-per-view went off the air as he came out to confront NWA World's Champion Jeff Jarrett at Victory Road. The intention was to build to Double J defending the strap against Savage, but that never ended up happening for various reasons. The only thing we actually ended up getting was a barely recognized Randy participating in a six-man tag at Turning Point, teaming with Jeff Hardy and AJ Styles against the Kings of Wrestling, aka Jarrett, alongside Scott Hall and Kevin Nash in Elvis-esque jumpsuits. I say he participated, but the truth is that Savage did the absolute bare minimum and only agreed to come out for the finish, which saw him do pretty much nothing before pinning the champion with a punch to the face as fans chanted for Hulk Hogan. A sad ending for an icon who clearly knew his best days were long behind him. Number 7. Big Boss Man vs Hacksaw Jim Duggan at IWA Japan's 10th Anniversary Show The last that most WWE fans saw of Big Boss Man was him performing job duty on Sunday Night Heat in the spring of 2002. In his last televised match, Ray Trailer did the honours for Tommy Dreamer before he was injured in a motorcycle accident and was shifted off the main roster and assigned to work at developmental territory OVW. He left Ohio Valley Wrestling and resurfaced in Japan for one last run with the IWA Japan Group, who he did a couple of tours for in 2004. His last tour ended up featuring his last match at the company's 10th anniversary show, where he competed in a tournament for the vacant IWA World 
World Heavyweight title. After getting past Freddy Krueger, don't ask, the prison guard met old pal hacksaw Jim Duggan, who had beaten Barbarian earlier in the finals. Going just a shade over three minutes, it was clear that Trailer was struggling to even make it that far, and the Japanese crowd openly laughed at much of the so-called action. Trailer would pass away from a heart attack just three weeks later. Number 6. Yokozuna and Jake Roberts vs Jim Neidhart and King Kong Bundy at Heroes of Wrestling Oh dear. Oh no, not this show again. 1999's Heroes of Wrestling pay-per-view was a terrible idea on paper that somehow managed to turn out much, much worse in practice, with one rotten match after another peaking with the supposed main event. In it, Jim Neidhart vs Jake Roberts turned into a tag match, also featuring King Kong Bundy and Yokozuna. The snake had shown up in no condition to perform, to put it mildly, and caused a scene with his intoxicated antics, seemingly more interested in trying to make out with plans and make phallic illusions with his pet python than, you know, doing the thing he was paid for. Jake continued to exist on another planet as the whole thing fell apart, culminating with him attempting to get naked in the ring before the feed thankfully cut out. Even more depressingly, this turned out to be the last televised match of the rapidly ballooning Yokozuna's career. Though he worked some tours in the UK the year after, these matches are not fully available, and thus Heroes of Wrestling is the last real record of Rodney Anawahi in a wrestling ring. Number 5. Kurt Kurt Angle vs Baron Corbin at WrestleMania 35 Kurt Angle is one of the most incredible performers in WWE history and a more than worthy Hall of Famer. When the Olympic hero returned to the company in the late 2010s following a decade-long stint in TNA, there was hope that he would be able to finish his career on a high in the company where his incredible pro wrestling journey started. And there were some highlights from Angle's second WWE run, such as him tagging with a debuting Ronda Rousey against Stephanie McMahon and Triple H at WrestleMania 34, and a couple of half-decent matches with Drew McIntyre and Chad Gable on Raw. For Kurt's retirement match at WrestleMania 35, WWE booked the former world champion against Baron Corbin, much to the annoyance of Angle himself, who wanted to wrestle John Cena on the grandest stage of them all. Angle's final match really should have been a much bigger deal, but he and Corbin only got six minutes to play with before the gold medalist did the clean job. In fairness, Kurt was physically far past his best and was seriously broken down, but even still, this was a damp squib of an ending for a genuine goat. Number 4. The Dynamite Kid, Dos Karas and Kuniaki Kobayashi versus The First Tiger Mask, The Great Sasuke and Mil Mascaras at Mishinoku Pro these days. The Dynamite Kid certainly made his mark in Canada and the US, where he wowed audiences while working for Stu Hart's Stampede Wrestling and Vince McMahon's WWE. However, he was an even bigger deal in Japan, where his battles with the original Tiger Mask are still considered to be some of the best to have ever taken place in the land of the rising sun, or anywhere else for that matter. Tom Billington's wrestling career petered out as injuries caught up to him, but he was coaxed out of retirement for one final bout in the Far East for the insurgent Mishinoku Pro Wrestling Group in 1996. Billed as a Legends match, Dynamite teamed with Dos Karas and Kuniaki Kobayashi to take on the great Sasuke, Mil Mascaras, and the original Tiger Mask. Though it wasn't the main event, this was the big draw of the show and helped attract around 8,000 people to Sumo Hall. Regrettably though, Dynamite was in really bad physical condition and looked a shell of his former self. Strikingly skinny and unable to even climb the ropes, he looked shaky and at one point even told Sayama that he couldn't take a bump from a suplex. While at the airport waiting to fly home the next day, Billington suffered a seizure and was rushed to the hospital. Number 3. Kurt Hennig vs David Flair at TNA's 27th pay-per-view in his prime, Kurt Hennig was one of the most spectacular performers in the business, famed for his extravagant bumps and fluidity. He really did live up to his Mr. Perfect moniker, nary putting a foot wrong between the ropes and having classic matches with the likes of Bret Hart, Ric Flair and others. A debilitating back injury suffered in 1991 seemed to signal retirement, but Hennig came back and, incredibly, wrestled off and on until early 2003. His back still bothered him though, and he was dogged by the dreaded personal demons, making him look like the shadow of the talent that he used to be. 
Hennig's last dance was far from perfect, as he met David Flair in a worthless axe handle on a pole match at TNA's 27th weekly pay-per-view. Not only was the last match a load of crap, with a clearly disinterested Kurt Hennig phoning it in, he outright refused to climb the pole himself, and summoned black shirt security member Chris Vaughn to do it for him. He then hit Flair with the wood to end the farce in about two minutes. One month later, Hennig would be found dead in a hotel room at the age of just 44. Number 2. Steve Williams vs Franco D'Angelo at ACW's Dr. Death Retirement Show Steve Williams was one of wrestling's noted tough guys and enjoyed a great career in the United States and Japan before his brawl for all defeat and catalogue of injuries slowed him down. Anyone doubting Dr. Death's toughness after he was KO'd by Bart Gunn really needs to shut their goddamn mouths because the former Triple Crown heavyweight champion showed everyone just how much fighting spirit he had when he fought throat cancer in the mid-2000s. After undergoing successful treatment to rid his body of the disease, Williams continued to wrestle on the indies and overseas before the cancer returned in 2009. He decided to retire while battling the Big C for a second time, his retirement match taking place for Asylum Championship Wrestling in his home state of Colorado. Beating Franco D'Angelo for the ACW heavyweight title, it was readily apparent that Williams was very sick and should not have been in the ring, his body frail and unable to perform even the most basic wrestling moves. It was more about the feel-good win and post-match celebration, of course, but there's something really heartbreaking about watching him out there knowing that he would pass away just four months later. Number 1. Ric Flair and Andrade El Idolo vs Jeff Jarrett and Jay Lethal at Ric Flair's last match Well, this was utterly terrifying, wasn't it? When Ric Flair announced that he would be wrestling one more match at the age of 73, some 11 years after he last stepped foot in the squared circle, there was a reaction of intrigue, concern, and ultimately fear. The videos he released of him training with one of his eventual opponents, Jay Lethal, were encouraging, but on the big night itself, it was not some fuzzy bit of nostalgia. Rather, it was a depressing ordeal where you just hoped the nature boy would make it out of the ring in one piece. Granted, he was going into the bout with a foot injury and was thus limited in what he could do physically, but fans were still taken aback by how wrecked Slick Rick looked. While Lethal Andrade and even Jarrett held up their end of the bargain, no amount of smoke and mirrors were going to hide the sad state Flair was in. Bluntly, he shouldn't have been allowed in the ring, let alone involved in a 27 minute main event match. Oh, and while the dirtiest player in the game only faked a heart attack during a bizarre spot, he almost gave me a very real one as I genuinely thought the bloke was going to randy the ram us right in front of our very eyes.